Good evening, everybody. System Chalk here with the 41st episode of Cultus Simulator, uh, playing the Bright Young Thing Legacy as David Ellison. And this should be the first episode of the new year. So very happy new year to all of you, and I hope it finds you well. Although that's true for pretty much all of the videos. Let's take a quick look at the situation. I'm a little surprised about the financial situation. I thought we had fixed that, but uh, obviously it's been a while since I've been uh, tending to my playthroughs. So tell you what, let's take a second here and see where uh, where we're at in terms of the the runs uh, or the run. <laughs> we just have one going. So uh, okay, portrait. Yes, this is a reputation-based portrait, so that's helping me with the money. We are getting Rending Mountains locations. Translating, we still have a few to work through. Although I think we've already translated all of these. I haven't been dreaming, and I think that's because I haven't repaired the mirror. So at some point I'm going to have to talk about that. Although I was looking to, uh, I was looking to um, start a relationship with Cat Caro. So shared light. Cat Caro listens as I speak. She links her arm through mine. This isn't what I dreamt would happen, she remarks, but I like it that way. She smiles. I dreamt I'd take you home. Perhaps instead you should take me home. Okay, we'll let that finish. Uh, I've got all the happy far off things, so whether I use reputation or whether I use um, passion, well I guess I can't use passion because we've got a full minute, but one way or another we're going to use that in a painting, which means commissions are probably off the table for a little while. And I suppose in the end, uh, we're looking to ascend. So I should maybe just take a quick inventory of where we're at with that. So I've got 10 lantern there. Uh, we've got, so 18, we've got 18 between the lore and the painting. And then we can add another 10 for a follower. So that's 28, and I think you need 36 or thereabouts. Um, so basically I'm, I'm missing eight. now. I mean, the funny thing is that I probably wouldn't actually need to ascend that far. I think getting, uh, I think a level 8 lantern influence is something that I could probably achieve through uh, a few other, a few other maneuvers. But we'll see. Again, we'll, we're looking, looking for an interesting ending and we'll, we have a few options ahead of us. Uh, as well, of course, uh, as a few paintings, but we'll worry about that a little bit later. Uh, also, I neglected to check, okay, we've got a free turn coming by, so let's just let everything run and see how it goes. I'll confess, I think I had some plans at the end of the uh, of the previous episode, but it's been very eventful for the last little while, uh, and so I am I'm not a hundred percent sure where where everything is. Now that's interesting. She went up to eleven lantern. Interested. This is someone who has developed a romantic interest in me. Archaeologists find treasures in tombs. Farmers bring harvest from fields. What does Kakaro unearth in dreams? So this does mean that our season of ardors is going to change, but maybe for the better. Let's talk with Madame Bichet about the commission, get that cooldown running, then we'll ask um, Adim for a new one, and then maybe we'll start working on the Wildering Mirror or possibly destroying the evidence. I'm not sure which one I want more. Something must have happened to the Caligine. This place merits closer investigation, so there's the observatory. Rending Mountains, it has been said, tear the flesh of history. It has generally only been said by people like Christopher Alopoli, but still, they are a good region to find the places that daylight history does not recognize. Okay, I could not spend money on better paints, or, uh, or I could find more exotic pigments. Now, the good news here is that uh, it's not going to get taken up before, uh, it's not going to be taken up for rent. So we've got 9 seconds left there, 13 seconds left there. But it's a concern that I have when I'm. It's a concern that I have when I'm uh, when I'm doing um, doing painting, and I've received the currency of the secret world, and my patron has let tantalizing information slip. The mystique isn't quite as important for me, although it is nice for dragging out the investigation. And I'm going to use the restlessness in a painting when I can. Okay, so Doctor Adim, Doctor would like help with his research. 
we have translated the account of Kanishk at the Spider's Door. Now, uh, I have a season of despair coming up. The contentment's not going to last long enough, but we are probably going to be doing a painting with um, that will generate a... Uh... Actually, you know, I suppose I should maybe be working on Lantern. Hmm. Now nah, we'll do it in order. Um, but yeah, so uh, reading a book like How the End Will Begin, usually you want to try and protect yourself from, um, from dread. Uh, this contentment's going to be going away, but on the other hand, if I if I wind up getting some staleness as a result of the painting, very likely this restlessness is going to be used inside of a passion painting, which is more likely to generate a contentment. So for now, I think I'm going to... I think I'll read it and then just kind of carry with it the assumption that my next painting is... or my next work action is going to be a very specific one. Uh, it may or may not turn out, but um, I figure it's probably the best... Uh, the best way because there's never going to be an ideal time to to get um to get dread um but it seems like a fairly low risk time uh, to be doing that how the end will begin a prophecy of the wars of the roads recorded in the subcontinent in the days before the great hooded princes in the foretold war the children of the leashed flame march on the cities of the continent but the enactors of solar law and the triple sisterhood join forces to hold them back at tremendous cost coming up better than usual. Dr. Dean would like a lantern commission. Let's talk to Jennings. And season of suspicion coming up, so that's going to mean that I want to send someone to destroy the evidence before I do anything else. I could let it become damning evidence. Um, actually, maybe that's... Yeah, maybe I do the repair and then damning evidence. It's something professional, special if they provoke a reaction. My recent work is celebrated. My name is known and my work has done well. So there's the staleness we were anticipating. Uh, we got two funds out of that, or three funds because of the, um, we had to pay the rent. So it could be worse. Some of that notoriety, actually a lot of this notoriety is going away on its own, which is nice. Uh, we got a fresh one because we were painting the Precussigans in an effort to preserve it. And in this case, I got to give it 11 seconds, but we do have another old and happy far off things coming up. So there's a little danger there. All right, here's what he needs. See, so yeah, I think what I'm going to do here is I will accept the damning evidence knowing that I'm going to be able to get rid of it through other means. And in the meantime, let's get a uh, forge follower working on the cracked mirror because that's something that can uh, can give me something useful. We can begin to repair this, but it will take at least a bronze spintra to purchase the necessary materials. And five seconds before the passion's done. I may want to get the precussigant exploring uh, exploring the streets just to be. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just to preserve it. You never know, this may be a living. And in this case, we want... I can't use the percuss again. I mean, I could use it temporarily, but... I'll figure, I'll figure something else out. place merits closer investigation. So this is also good news that we got the Tombs of the Shadowless Kings, because that means there's no more locations in the Rending Mountains. It's tempting to follow through on the Vagabond's map, and under normal circumstances I would, but right now we're gonna uh, explore with the Precussigan just so that I can preserve the... just so that I can preserve the, um, kind of the life. Uh, we won't pay for the paints in this case. And we do have a hireling attempted to purchase them. Because the notoriety is going to be helpful for the painting, and then the um, kind of the input for the for the spider door might be useful too. All right, in that battle between the imperishable legions and the leashed flame, the legions will perish and the flame will be unleashed. So, as expected, we got a dread. Um, we also have the mysteries of force. The colonel and the lion smith are gods who were flesh, but the wolf divided is a god who was blood. Cunning, strength, and agony are the three roots of victory, and here is their secret doctrine. Now, I can't recall if we've seen any references to the wolf divided <clears throat> um, with the 
with the, um, what was it? Uh, um, I don't, I don't know if we've seen any references to The Wolf Divided uh, with Edge. I know we've seen The Wolf Divided uh, in references to Winter. Um, and then uh, I don't rem recall... Actually, I don't know if there's ever been a reference to Gods Who Were Flesh uh, specifically being... I think these were the mortals who became ours, uh, like the Watchmen. And I don't recall if there's ever actually a specific point where that becomes really explicit, but... That's a conversation for another time. I think what I'm going to do uh, as a precaution, we're going to do the Sky of the Soul, and that's just because this one's a little more likely to have Lantern. And so uh, the other alternative is we can get rid of this dread through the fascination. So uh, the Sky of the Soul, the grand labor of Cal, an ascetic poet writing at the court of the Shadowless Kings. Cal's verses are brief, obscure, and often dominated by images of violence. A star is a pinprick, but the sun is a wound. that I am is here. Okay, Season of Ardor is coming up, so hopefully we don't need to buy any gifts. This thing is something special, made to provoke a reaction. And two funds. We also got rid of the staleness, which is even better. Alright, my recent work is considered significant. I may yet earn a living from this, but nothing is certain. So four mystique to show for the trouble. Got rid of the staleness, which was the main purpose. And I'm a little short on notoriety. I think I'm just going to have to go for what I've got available. So it'll be worth a bit less, but... I, uh, I kind of need to get this stuff cleared out as soon as possible. You never know, this might be a living. So we also didn't get the contentment, which is why I'm now focused a little bit more on uh, on trying to get the fascination. One other thing I want to keep in mind about the secret histories is that it it's possible to upgrade the Forbidden Epic, but in the end I'm now going to be upgrading them to uh, Vagabond's maps, which is a little a little different than anticipated. Oh, I forgot to give Tristan the bronze spintra. That's my bad. Uh, I even looked at it. I was going to comment on it, but uh, I didn't. So this will buy their loyalty for now. Okay. So I think I'm going to try and resummon the Precussigans after this. I should figure out what I'm doing with exploring. Yeah, let's locate tombs and sorrows and lone and level sands. The river, wrote the sage Mech in the Book of the Centipede, runs through the sands out of myth and into legend. This is the place the centipede was born, they say. The sands of which Mech wrote hide perilous curiosities. And it's always possible to be deader, Cal states. The watchman goes before, none but seven may go after. Yet surely we are born to the glory as the sparks fly upward. So there was the expected fascination, and we've got another formula concursive. So eventually we'll turn that uh, into a higher level, but we still have books that we can read. So let's start by getting rid of the fascination. The doors of vision swing wide. A little darkness will mellow my light. Even dread has its uses. And now we'll move back to the, the usual, uh, or the original um, ordering. So the 26 enticements, 7 torments. The painter Niels Friedrich Malsker notoriously attempted a series of paintings based on the torments. By the fifth torment, the demands of the painting had grown so dire that he died of blood loss. The diagrams in this text are thankfully less detailed. The enticements of the grail outnumber its torments, but its torments are its final nature. Birth is the first torment, and thirst the seventh. ashamed of here, although I'm feeling a little nervous about the timing. Okay, that's a lot of staleness. My recent work has accrued modest fame. My paintings have reviewed well. I think... 
It's tempting to get that passion out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna risk the um, the time on the percuss again. Raison, the raptures of understanding. My lover and I contend in the spaces above and beneath the flesh. I must match their intensity. Together we are brighter. So again, just waiting on the passion here. Okay. So I want to do the painting first, just because getting rid of three staleness is going to take a while. Oh, that's going to be hard to preserve. Caro knows the way. Cat Caro knows so many ways. We'll walk them together when the moon parts, the curtains to peep into dark. So this was a pleasant memory. I could recall a happier time and contentment. So I'll try and make the most of the pleasant memory, but it'll probably just pass. And now we can give them the bronze. Place merits closer investigation. This temple of seven coils. So once I've got my, and once I'm a little more stable financially, we do want to start moving on those expeditions right away. This suggests to me, uh, especially given that painting is closed as an option, we should be heading back to Aura Flams and starting to sell some items. So this oddity is probably worth something, but it's hard to be sure. The air is curdled now. I'm home again in this lump in flesh. Better, perhaps. Through the enumeration of the Grail's enticements and torments winds the sor sorrowful history of the witches of the dry land, the ordeal of birth from two wombs, their struggle from and supplication of the Grail, the yearning for union which drives them all. So, more dread here, and we've got another formula of- oh, sorry, this is the first formula voluptuous. There exist some pleasures intense enough to corrupt the laws of the physical world. So we can get rid... I think we'll um, get rid of these as they emerge. I remember I was different before. And study-wise, we can move on to the Gospel of Zacchaeus, which is a little bit tamer. Uh, an extremely heterodox account of the Nazarene Messiah and his works, describing his ascension to the Mansus through an opening of his body. Seven were the wounds of his body, seven the doors of the house, seven the lesser aspects of the hours, and knock the aspect above all, for the mother of ants is the mother of salvation. Oops. I always really liked this, this idea. Um, obviously, like, lost gospels are not new, um, but I think it's not just that this, like, so the one text is kind of interesting on its own, but also... I mean, it's a little bit like anything else that appears in Cult Simulator. If you're familiar with a bit of history, or if you, um, you know, if it hooks into something else that you enjoy. So I really like uh, the Priest DLC. Uh, so in addition to just really liking the the DLC, um, you know, uh, it's it's just a neat little way. I I think. In addition to the fact that Cult of Simulator is really interesting and you can jump into the lore and just have a lot of fun with it, um, what can be nice is that if you know something uh, and you see a neat spin on it, the again, the quality of the writing is consistently good. And so you get this fun of even things that you may know well, you get to see them in a new light. Um, and of course, because there's multiple histories, you sometimes get to see the same thing in different lights. Um, but, uh, you know, the other version of that is sometimes you'll go wandering around inside of, you know, the ideas of Cult of Simulator, and you'll actually find that there are things that you never knew about. Uh, maybe that even seem like, um, you know, seem like they might be invented for the purposes of the game. So a really good example of this is one of the founders of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Now, this wouldn't appear in Cult of Simulator because it takes place before this, but one of the founders of the Jet Propulsion Laboratory is a man named Jack Parsons, who was an occultist. Um, I think, you know, recited the hymn to Pan uh, during one of the, the early launches. 
um, you know, was eventually sort of kicked out. Like, if you read some of the details about Parsons, you can absolutely see a Cult of Simulator story built inside of that, just one that takes place a little bit later than the events of this one. Um, you know, everything right down to sort of the notoriety and, and all of that. One of the things that I always find difficult is, you know, whether or not to share some of this stuff, because one of the drawbacks is, is that, you know, you never know if people are familiar with some of these details uh, or like, you know, what's common knowledge or not. Because I mean, sometimes the stuff I just find by going on a, you know, a bit of a, a Wikipedia uh, expedition. And then usually if you want to get to knowledge, sometimes what you'll do is you'll follow the references to make sure that it's actually saying what it says. But, you know, in the end, I think everybody's had that experience of wandering through um, the, you know, the encyclopedia and seeing what comes up. Uh, and then the really wild details, you know, again, that's usually when you start going to primary sources. Incidentally, if you don't do that, do check the primary sources because usually the, the wild stuff actually doesn't wind up in the original article. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, again, it's because there's so much history in the game, um, in addition to all sorts of other references, um, something like the Gospel of Zacchaeus is just kind of neat if you happen to like, you know, old texts or if you like, you know, reading about, I, I mean, sometimes one of the things that can be interesting in terms of reading, and admittedly, this is kind of the back end, my, my classics prof was kind of neat because they didn't just end in... So it was classical philosophy was the, the courses that I took. But for the second, the second term, he chose not to sort of end it in the usual point where you'll see, um, you know, you'll usually see kind of Hellenic philosophy end. Uh, he actually just pushed it a little bit further. So you don't just get something like Neoplatonism, but you go a little bit further where you really do start seeing this transition uh, from what we would sort of firmly refer to as sort of classical philosophy into something that would probably be, you know, maybe not theology slash religious studies slash, you know, a few other different disciplines, but definitely something that's quite distinct from what you would normally normally see. But still important, right? Because like these dividing lines sometimes exist for the purposes of, you know, being able to teach or, or for scholarship. Um, so with that in mind, um, you know, there's always the, the fun stories, you know, for lack of a better term, you know, what if Christianity had adopted this particular set of teachings? Or maybe what if this book had wound up as part of the, the canon rather than this other one? What if this person was not considered a heretic, um, or, but instead sort of became one of the fathers? And of course, there's tons of reasons as to why history turned out the way that it did. Sometimes it's pure coincidence. Uh, I'm sure <laughs> anybody who's um, read or watched uh, the History Boys probably, I, I wasn't intending it that way, but there's a lot of that in the, the History Boys. Um, or sometimes, you know, you, you can see sort of a clear through line. But again, where some of the fun of the, the secret histories comes in is sort of being able to ask those what ifs or to, to play around with it, or even sometimes just decode what was happening. So in the case of the Gospel of Zacchaeus, obviously to see a retelling of the Gospels in the light of um, sort of the world of Cultus Simulator is really neat, uh, because at least for my own upbringing, you know, I had to go to Sunday school at a church going family. So at least these kinds of, you know, certain Bible stories, certain concepts in terms of uh, at least a Protestant view of Christianity are familiar to me. Um, and so in that case, and then, you know, again, I just read stuff. So um, those can be a little rewarding to me just because, again, of a particular background or a particular understanding on, on little details. Uh, and again, like one of the things that always impresses me about Culta Simulator is the breadth of the, the coverage and the material. Um, but, you know, beyond that, it's just really fun to sort of wander through some of these ideas and, and see where they, they take you. Sometimes even to use them as, you know, hints or, uh, or, um, or points where you might be, uh, might be guided. Okay, anyways, my recent work is considered significant. I may earn a living from this, but nothing is certain. So we're down to two staleness. I also have a fascination I need to get rid of, but we can use that with the fleeting reminiscence. The more important task is to get this precussigant back in the lineup. So don't need to take the mirror of glory. I am, however, going to do 
Actually, I can protect myself with the sunset right. Or is I Well, yeah. Uh, and then I just add knock, so um, investigate indication. Probably could have gone with less, but the percussion, merciless and merry, heart will bring it, edge will constrain it. So the nice thing about this little combination is I annihilate the fascination. This percussion still hangs around, but like at 0.5 seconds, I'm not going to be able to recover it. Um, and, you know, in the end, I don't really lose anything that I didn't want to already lose. Um, even if the thing had resisted, I would have, um, I would have, uh, um, theoretically been able to resummon it. Like I said, half a second is not enough time to be able to work with it, but it's a good habit to build into. All right, the mirror is repaired. It shines again as it did once before. So thank you, Tristan. We will head to the peacock door when the time comes. But let's imprison the shifty woman. This one must serve another purpose now. Into the cupboard they go. The auctioneer's gavel bangs. My item is sold. So I've got a little bit of money. I might be able to go into the Kuznetsov endowment to be perfectly honest. Uh, let's at least summon the new Prakasigan before I go running off. This curiosity will earn you some funds. I mean, it's kind of tempting to just keep <laughs> keep the books because they look nice, but... I've locked this one away safely. When their screaming and raving subsides, I will subdue them properly. So again, this is earning us notoriety during a season of suspicion, but I'm not that worried about it. We've got tons of mystique, first of all, and then I would like to paint with this if I can. So uh, we know what we're going to do with the... Um, we know what we're going to do with the um, the evidence if it comes up. Here's what she needs. Okay, so this moth commission is a pretty high priority for me just because that will be getting me more um, iron spintra. But until we do that, let's think about some other steps that we can take. Um, if I want to talk to someone, what would I want to talk to them about? Well, we can do burglary to get some more money. Significant conversations in a smoky meeting room. What do I need from my follower? My disciple can probably use their talents to harvest treasures from the unsuspecting. Now, I will also want to get... Um, I will want to get uh, another body at some point, but this will work for me for now. Another mark. I've drunk the light from their mind. It thrills and fills me. The marks brighten... Here's gavel bangs. My item has sold. Uh, we'll do 16 seconds. Let's hold off on that, actually. The sun still moves. The wind still walks. My journals are the labyrinth. So let's go back to the peacock door. No time like the present. Peacock store. The peacock's door reflects the mirror I hold in my sleep, and the mirror reflects the peacock's door. Already a sensuous shiver ripples its surface. It aches for fracture, and when it finds that satisfaction, I will enter. The hook, which includes a description of a, sorry, the book uh, includes a description of a rite which can be used to raise a corpse to half-life, in memory of he who bled for the wood. It requires a corpse and sufficient power. The author suggests an invocation of winter lore and an assistant touched by the powers of the wood. So if we need to raise a corpse for any reason. Right of mother's, mother's Mercy. Okay, last book for us to read on, in the current program. The account of Kanishk at the Spider's Door. Locke Cowley, Kanishk's victim and lover, wrote this account, perhaps posthumously. And actually, you know what? We're close enough to the end that maybe we will start reading that work um, next... Uh, in the next... Um, next session. We're doing all right for fun, so I do want to go on an expedition, but we might as well get the again for it. Um, study, again, we've got one more book to go, and then we have to start either moving up lore, or we're using the study verb 
sort of idly. It has been kind of nice. We haven't gotten sick yet, um, which I suppose is is a nice um, a nice side bonus. Uh, everything else, yeah, um, we're progressing at a decent enough pace. If if I had a if I got a sufficiently high lantern uh, influence, I would be able to essentially I'd be able to finish the playthrough. Um, but we'll see. I mean, easier said than done, right? <laughs> I, I do need to actually get the lantern influence. Uh, plus, at some point, I would like to do the uh, winter painting. All of that, though, will be done in the future. So this should be Monday's episode. Uh, thank you very much for watching. There will be no episode on Tuesday, as usual. Um, but I will see you all on Wednesday with a new uh, new cultist episode. Uh, sorry, cultist simulator episode. Take care until then. <laughs>